Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act 2. As you can see, Art and I are with the fabulous John Mariani, food and travel writer extraordinaire. John, good to see you. Good to be back. Hey, John, I have a question. Um, since uh, one of my lawnsmen was uh, mayor a while back, um, I have a couple of questions. First of all, are there any good, uh, like, uh, delis, Jewish delis there? as we have in New York. And uh, also, now that I'm a, a vegan, can you get by as a vegan in Dublin? I don't know of any Jewish delis in Dublin. I mean, if Jewish delis, uh, in New York, Jewish deli mean exactly the same thing. Um, but no, I don't know of any. Uh, there are other countries, Canada, Montreal has a very good sure. Jewish deli. But uh, Dublin does not, as far as I know. As for vegan, that's, I mean, that's the simplest thing in the world. They have great products. Every menu of every restaurant I went to had vegan selections, uh, some mm. often noted, and uh, all those other you know, ridiculous things. They like six different things. People can't eat this, and can't eat that, can't eat this, and can't eat that. Uh, okay, so for the, re for the rest of us, for the rest of our audience, okay, what's to eat in Dublin? Uh, you can eat internationally, which is to say that there's Italian restaurants and Thai restaurants and Chinese restaurants and Japanese, a lot, a lot of sushi and so forth. But who wants to? Um, meaning that if you live in Dublin, you get a little tired of, uh, of Irish food, then <clears throat> eat of those other places. <clears throat> but um, about ten, even 10 years ago, and I go to Dublin as often as I can, even 10 years ago, the restaurants in Dublin were very good but a bit copycat in that they were trying to all to be French. And the top restaurants in Dublin, like a place called Patrick Guibault, with a Michelin star or two, um, was resolutely French. That has radically changed, or if not radically. Um, the food is still based on French classical cooking principles. But because, as I mentioned in another show we did together, um, that they are now capitalizing on the bounty of the sea and the land and the local cheeses and the artisanal uh, farms and so forth, the products are just so terrific that um, they are now making more Irish food. Now, if you say, well, what's Irish food? Uh, you know, potatoes and corned beef, and I won't get into the corned beef thing again, but it's to say, in other words, they eat crabs just the way anybody else does. They eat lobsters, they eat beef, they eat lamb, and they prepare it in ways that are always going to have potatoes, which they still love on the side. Um, and uh, the breakfast is still going to be an Irish breakfast, which is going to have a, a black pudding, and it's going to have uh, scrambled eggs and streaky bacon and so forth. But the uh, restaurants, which range from the um, uh, uh, fish and chips place, up to the top restaurants, including Patrick E. Bow, uh, are now much more devoted proudly on their menu. They tell you, this is where this came from. This is where this lamb is from. These oysters were picked off the bay of such and such. Um, much more localized, much more regionalized. So John, what are, when we go to Dublin, what are some of the best restaurants that we want to try, the high-end stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, at the high end, as I said, Patrick Guibo, still resolutely French, is very, very good. That's in the Marion Hotel, uh, right in the center of town. So I highly recommend that. Um, it's uh, it's um, a competition place named Thornton's is gone. Another place called Le Rivan is gone because they said Irish food has surpassed them. So I went to some new places while I was there and went to some places that have been reclaimed over the last five years. I mentioned on another show, Shelburne's Hotel, very famous historic hotel there. Yes. And they have like three or four, they have a pub there, they have a little brasserie, they have a tea room, and they have a uh, really superb um, dining room, uh, formal without being pretentious, um, very, very good cordial service. Um, a beautiful room, and um, they have uh, they ha they have terrific oysters. They have the best wild salmon. You know how rare it is to get wild salmon in the United States. 
uh, maybe if you're in the Pacific Northwest, but wild salmon is impossible to get here. Um, all of it's raised and, and cultured. In Ireland, stuff is swimming out there in the uh, in the Irish waters. So they get, and I, the the piece of, um, of salmon I had there uh, was just absolutely superb. Uh, the crab dishes are, are really, really great. They love their treacly pudding. They love their um, possets and uh, and uh, desserts that uh, they make so well there with, I mean, extraordinary cream, extraordinary butter. So uh, the Shelburne is a place where you go for a special occasion or as I did just for a midday lunch when you wanted to treat yourself to something posh. Um, one of the uh, top restaurants in terms of fine dining there is called Glover's by um, uh, Andy McFadden, McMadden. And that's on the Fitzwilliam Hotel on the second floor. It's very modern looking. It looks like a cross between a, a, an ocean liner and a lady's hair salon <laughs> in a good way, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> and he's a very inventive, creative chef. So the best thing there to do is to go with the tasting menu, about six or seven courses, which will cost you over 100 euros, 125. And, you know, the euro is now at almost full parity with the dollar. So um, you're getting away with it, not getting away with anything, but it's much, much easier to bear. They have a terrific, terrific wine list. Um, I've never had better lamb than at uh, Glover's. And uh, that's quite a gastronomic experience. You know, you're always going to sort off the champagne and he'll serve you little bonbons of, of foie gras. It's that kind of restaurant. Uh, moving down just a, a little bit is a place called Peplos. Peplos, P-E-B as in boy, L-O-E apostrophe S, which has been around for about 10 years. This is the posh place uh, where wealthy, well-off um Dubliners and yuppies go, as well as any celebrity who is in town is going to go there. The celebrities used to go to a place called uh, in the Clarence Hotel, which is owned by Bono and you, you too. And that was a place you'd run into Mick Jagger. But that's that's changed hands. Um, they still own the building, but they sold it to another another company. Um, but Peblos is a place that if any celebrity is in town, he's probably going to be. It's fairly swanky, kind of in a 1990s sort of way. <clears throat> not minimalist, um, beautiful settings. There's a small room to the back, which I highly recommend, which is surrounded by books and wine bottles. Uh, yeah, a very snazzy bar. Um, it's it's just a really wonderful place. And that's, an inter that's a continental style menu there. So uh, while you get Irish, Irish favorites, uh, you can also get a good uh, chicken a la milanese, crisp with salad on top. And um, you can end off with good Irish cheeses. They have a good onion soup gratiné, uh, French onion soup. So Peblos is a swell place to go for the swells. Um, a little bit down from that, but still one of my favorites is a place called Matt the Thresher, um, who is a local personage uh, nobody remembers except for the guy who named Matt the Pest um, the Thresher. And this is a first rate anywhere seafood restaurant uh, in Dublin. It's set on two levels and two dining rooms and a great long bar with all of these brass spigots pouring various Irish beers and, and Guinness and so forth. Um, terrific wine list, great catch of the day, which is what you should go for. So it might be a sea bass or it might be salmon or something, uh, all prepared with uh, excellent sauces, real master chef back there. Or you go simple for just grilled fish, or a big pot of mussels and, and, and wine sauce. Um, I really like Matt the Thresher. If you had only, I don't know if you had only one meal, but if you really wanted to get a taste of modern Irish cooking, I would say Matt the Thresher is the place you, you should go. Now, if you are, um, if you loved Oscar Wilde, an expatriate, there's a place called Wilde, W-I-L-D-E, in the um, Westbury Hotel, again on the second floor, overlooking downtown Dublin. Beautiful place uh, with a uh, sunroom, dining room. Uh, the light pours in through French windows, white and black marble um, marble floors. And on the back of the chairs, they put a little comforter in case you get there's a little chill in the air. So they're <laughs> really, really lovely. Um, they have a lot, as, as 
a lot of uh, Dublin restaurants do. They have a lot of Eastern Europeans as uh, servers and, and waiters, including an excellent sommelier, a woman from, I think she was from Croatia, who really knew her stuff. And uh, <clears throat> there you might start off with uh, some ravioli, which are packed with uh, with uh, Irish uh, seafood and uh, move on to just a beautiful, beautiful piece of uh, lamb. Uh, they do a good chicken curry, uh, which is not that easy to find anymore except outside of pubs. So that's a place I highly recommend it. And then across the Liffey on the north side in a uh, an old red brick building reconverted into a modern hip and happening hotel called Mason's, Mason's Hotel. They have a smart hotel, a smart pub downstairs and upstairs they have Riley's Grill. And the grill part refers to a grill of multiple levels that can be raised and lowered so that if they don't just put chicken and lamb and beef and whatever here and cook it all in one thing, they can raise and lower the temperature uh, perfectly so every individual species of animal on there is uh, going to be perfectly uh, perfectly cooked. Um, they also have their own um, like James Joyce beer glasses with their own, um, they, they ship in their own wines, which are not very good, frankly. The house wines are, the one I tried, the red wine was, was, was awful. But portions are enormous. So even among the appetizers um, you order, you could share that with somebody else. The, the desserts are, it's like going, remember the old John's, J-A-H-N in the Bronx, an ice cream store where they had 26 flavors all piled at the Yes, them. yeah, John's, uh, yeah. But if you order- We, we a, had a, them in Brooklyn too. They did have them in Brooklyn too and, and, and in Queens. Um, but if you don't, if you order a chocolate sundae or a caramel sundae at Riley's Grill, um, two or three can, can share that. Very good prices. Um, Good prices on the wines too, and that's a brand new uh, happening place. So I mean, it's just all over town. Um, most of these places I just mentioned <clears throat> are either new or reclaimed, uh, reopened, new young chefs, and uh, all using first-rate Irish ingredients. And um, although if you go to Patrick Gibo, it's going to cost you 130, 140 pounds with wine. Um, and at, at, at Glover is about the same. The other places I mentioned is a hundred hundred euro bill with everything included, you know, taxes and, and service, uh, so forth. So um, it's, um, they're moderately priced restaurants. Then as I said, the fish and chips place all over town, um, attached to every, every pub with any, with any menu at all has fish and chips and shepherd's pie, all the stuff that you can get at any Irish pub anywhere. Um, yeah. They don't have Irish music quite as good as they do in Ireland and Dublin. <laughs> it sounds, uh, it, it, you make Dublin sound like a wonderful food city. Mm. Uh, yeah. because, and I'm assuming you can, any concierge at any hotel will tell you about all these restaurants. And if you, if you want to go uh, and have a fine dining experience at, at a top restaurant, they'll know these places. Am I correct? Oh, they'll definitely know all of the places that I mentioned. Uh, as with any concierge anywhere in the world, be very specific as to what you're looking for. You say, oh, I want to go to a nice restaurant. I mean, that doesn't cut it. What they'll do is to send you to the restaurant that their last 10,000 American tourists enjoyed the re their recommendation. So mm, like, good point. I always like Coleman. Send them to Coleman. The Americans like that place. Yeah. yeah. Very, very specific. I want seafood. I want a posh place. It's our anniversary. We're celebrating here. I want that kind of. I want the best fish and chips in town. Where do you go for fish and chips? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's how I found out about the hairy lemon from the concierge at the Westbury. Uh, <laughs> oh, just half a block from here. Go, turn left like that. That's my place to go. And right. And that's 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 the fun of mm -hmm. going to a new city and finding a new restaurant. Not the big tour spot where you have to wait in line because thousands of people know about it. It's finding that off the track, sometimes it's a mom and pop place that just has great food. Oh, absolutely. But again, the more specific and tell them what you want to spend, uh, tell them what your budget is because uh, yeah. they know, you know, and, uh, <clears throat> they usually don't ask you that question. Yeah, specifically yeah they don't want to know. Um, but you, you the, the restaurants you just went through, for instance, 
these are all top of the line restaurants. You expect to pay a uh, hundred bucks a person before you get out of there. Not not including necessarily wine and tips. Well, no, they, a nice bottle of wine. Okay, two people, two hundred bucks. Let's say, okay, <clears throat> it's a three course meal for each of you. Um, and as I said, you could cut down by having only one dessert and so forth. But it includes wine, tax, and tip. It's not a great, great deal of money. Mm. Right, right. Uh, well, Dublin sounds like a wonderful place. And, and what I like from your description is <coughs> that there's, I'll call it classic world-class food, lamb, beef, fish, whatever, but with a lot of Irish, unique, local flavor to it. Now that's, and that's, now that's that's what you're looking for. It didn't used to be the Irish. Well, if you went to a fish house in Ireland 20 years ago, that fish would be coming in from France or England or Italy or the Mediterranean. <clears throat> now it's the stuff that's just off the coast. Right. And for good reason. Who yep. knows why it was ever different. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, John. Uh, thank John. you for your uh, recent tour of Dublin. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.